Welcome to video five, field types and buttons. In this section, we'll cover the different field types that can be used to capture a user's data and examples of how you use them. We'll also discuss how buttons move an end user through their guided interview and can be an alternative for capturing user data. There are 15 different field types. Field types are the way that you ask a user for their information. They are related to variable types, but are not strictly tied together. Field types are more about showing the user how you want their data or restricting what kinds of data they can give you. There are two text field types, text and text long. They share the same field attributes, which I'll talk about in a minute. The main difference is in how much information you expect the user to give you. Text fields are meant to be one line of text, like a name or an address. Text long fields are used when you expect the user's answer to be longer than that. The text field itself can capture an unlimited amount of data from the end user, but it's a clunky interface or an experience for the end user if they have a lot of text to type. So the text long field allows them a larger field on the screen and it's expandable to let them see and type the entirety of their answer. This is true in the desktop and the mobile experience. Here's a quick video of the text long field as the user would experience it. Whichever text field types that you choose, you'll have these editing options. You can add a label, that's what the user sees before or on top of the field on the page. Then you can attach a variable to this field to catch the user's answer. You can start typing the variable's name and A to J will do a character match to existing variables and then you can select the one that you want to use. Or you can create a new variable here on the fly by clicking add new and the variable design editor will pop up. Under the variable name section is the default value. Perhaps you expect all your users to live in a specific state or county or answer a certain way. You can pre-fill in the answer for them with the default value. It'll show up in the field on the page for them, but the user can always change it if it doesn't match their situation. Under that is a checkbox for requiring the user to answer this field before they move on. The user will know this field is required because the word required appears next to the field label. Below that is the max character field. You can limit the number of characters that a user can type in. If you add a number to this field, the user will be given a countdown of characters on the page when they type into this field. Below that is the custom invalid prompt field. When a field is required and a user doesn't answer it, there is a default error message that pops up saying, you must type a response in the highlighted space before you can continue. If you want a different error message, you can add that custom text to the custom invalid prompt field. Finally, we have the sample value field. This is for author testing purposes. Sometimes when you're testing, it can get tedious to retype in addresses or blocks of text. By putting a sample value in this field, you can hit fill in preview mode and quickly fill out all the fields that have sample values. It allows you to move more quickly through the testing of the interview or to test other components of the interview, like the logic or the branching, without having to type lengthy test answers. Six of the field types are number of fields. On the screen are the editing options for just number field type, but all the number fields have variations of these options. There's number, number dollar, number social security, number phone, number zip code, and number pick from list. Each one allows you to add a label, a variable, and a default value to it. You can also make it required and add a custom invalid prompt. Some number fields give you the option to show a calculator to the end user, and some let you set a minimum and or a maximum value that the user's answer must fit within to allow them to move on. Some also include the sample value option we just discussed in the text field section. Now, not all number fields are going to use number variable types. This can be kind of confusing for new authors, but a good rule of thumb is that you only need actual number variable types when you plan to do math with them. So things like number social security number, number phone, and number zip code really should be text variable types. You'd select the number field type to get the customized suggested answer prompts that appear with these field types. For example, for number phone, the user will be shown the standard US way of showing a phone number with the three digit area code in parentheses, then three digits, a dash, and four digits. The user isn't required to answer this way, but they are shown a suggestion for answering. The date field type is used when you want to collect a date in month-month, day-day, year-year-year-year format. 
You use a date variable type and you can set a default value. You can add a label if you need to clarify a bit more about what is being asked for in this exact field. You can make this field required and add minimum and maximum date values to limit the user's response. A cool thing with date fields is that you can use the function today, literally the word today, in those min or max fields, and A to J author will use the exact date that the user is running the interview every time they run the interview. So that field is always up to date. When you set a min or max parameter with a date field, the dates outside that parameter will be grayed out on the calendar date picker. The user also won't be able to move on if they select a date outside that parameter or try to type one in. That will trigger an error message that they need to select a date within the given range and show the range. Finally, you can also add a custom and valid prompt for required fields and add a sample value for testing purposes. The gender field type is a historic artifact in A to J Author. In earlier versions of the software, we only had two user avatar options and they were labeled male or female. In 2019, we updated our avatar picker and allowed users to pick from eight avatar options with a variety of appearance options. The user no longer needs to pick if they want their avatar to appear male or female. They just select the options that they want. So the gender field still exists as we continue to support those older interviews. But the current default way for a user to pick an avatar is with the user avatar field, which I'll talk about in a few slides. Radio buttons are used when authors want to provide a selection of choices for the end user, but need to guarantee that the end user only selects one option. For example, you have a question that asks, what is your marital status? You could use radio buttons with the options, that is the labels, of single, married, divorced, and widowed. You'd use four field type radio buttons with those individual labels and the same multiple choice variable type, something like marital status MC. The default value for each option would be the same as the label, so single, married, divorced, and widowed. Each option uses the same variable, but has different default values that populate the answer file if the user picks that radio button. Therefore, if a series of radio buttons are presented in a page, only one button can be selected. Checkboxes, on the other hand, are used to provide the end user with the option of selecting multiple items. The checkbox field type then should be used with a true-false variable type. True-false variables have three states, true, false, and unanswered. Presenting a user with a page with checkboxes on it then removes the unanswered state for those true-false variables associated with the checkboxes on that page. So if the box is checked by the user, it's set to true. If it's unchecked, it's set to false when the user moves off that page. Once the user sees the page with a true-false variable on it, in this case in a page with checkboxes, that unanswered state is resolved to either true or false. Each checkbox option should have its own true-false variable. For example, I could ask a question about what types of income the user receives monthly with checkboxes for wages from employment, social security, disability, retirement, alimony, other. Each option would be its own checkbox with its own label and its own true-false variable. You can also make a checkbox required. An example of where you'd use this is with an introductory page that explains that this interview doesn't replace the advice of a lawyer, and it doesn't create a lawyer-client relationship with the author's organization. At the end, there'd be a checkbox with a label that says, I understand or I accept, and a variable of accepts limitations TF that would be set to true when the user checks the box. If they don't check the box, they wouldn't be able to move on, and you could add a custom invalid prompt that says they're not allowed to continue unless they agree to this condition. When a checkbox none of the above field type is present on a page, it requires the end user to pick one of the presented checkbox fields set up in the normal checkbox ways I just described, or they must select this none of the above option. Unlike a required checkbox in the last screen that would require each required checkbox to be checked before the user could move on, this option requires some answer to be selected for the entire page, not each specific checkbox. This should only be used once per page and has its own true-false variable. You as the author can customize the label, but it customarily says something like none of the above or other. The final field type is user avatar. This is used to populate the question which allows the end user to select their avatar. It comes by default with every new A to J guided interview inside the page called the three dash avatar. To use it, you don't have to do anything. You can edit that three dash avatar page if you want to change the question text or add to it. But if you wanna use the avatar picking tool elsewhere for some reason, you use the field type user avatar. 
It has the same label, variable, and custom and valid prompts as any other variable type. In the default question, it's used with the default variable user avatar. This is the variable Ada J Author knows to use to set up the picker with eight options and the associated hair and skin tone options. You should also use this variable if you want to create the picker in another page. Now that we've discussed all the ways to capture users' data with fields, let's talk about another option for recording that information. Buttons move end users through the interview. Oftentimes, the button is a simple continue or next button. However, buttons can also capture user data. Within the button section, authors can add up to three buttons to a page. Each button has a label to display to the end user. Those labels can be whatever you want them to be. They don't have to just be continue, next, yes, no. The labels are dynamically sized, so they'll expand or contract to fit what you add into that label field. Each can also have a variable associated with it that will be set to the default value if the user presses that button. You can use buttons in lieu of fields when you have three or fewer defined options for the end user to pick from. Each button can also branch the end user to a different next page via the set destination button. Buttons are the main way that you move your end user through an interview, but they can be overridden by logic. We'll talk more about that in the advanced condition video at the end of the interview section of this series. When you're ready to set the button's destination, that target next page for your end user, you'll click the set destination button with the chain link icon. A list of all the pages in your interview will pop up. You can then highlight the page that you want to set as the destination page and click change. This will set it as the target page for that specific button. Each of the three possible buttons can have a different destination page, or they can all have the same destination page. You'd have all the buttons going to the same destination page if every user needed to hit that next page, but you wanted to capture a different default value with that button click. For example, you could use buttons for a question like, are you the petitioner or the respondent? You'd have one button labeled petitioner with the variable is petitioner TF and a default value of true, and another button labeled respondent with a variable is respondent TF and a default value of true. Or you could use that same is petitioner TF variable and have the respondent option default set to false. The variables you use depend on how you'll use that information later in the interview or the requirements of your template. On the screenshot here, you'll also see the special branching section underneath the pages by step. Special branching is a series of destination options that do specific things within A to J Author like save and resume, exit the user out of the interview completely, and the assemble commands. Those will be covered in the exiting options video in section four of this training series. Next to the set destination button is the edit page button. This lets you jump to the page that you've set as the next destination. This saves you a step when you're in the authoring groove from having to close this QDE and open up the QDE for that next page in the line of pages you're creating and editing. Finally, at the bottom of the button section is the repeat options and the counting variable field. Both of these are used for repeat loops, which will be covered in depth in video six of this section. In this video, we've covered all 15 field types and have gone into depth on the buttons tab. Join me for the next video on all the bonus features of the interview process. We'll talk about learn mores, pop-ups, macros, the merge tool, repeat loops, and functions.